let's start our session. So um, hi everyone, uh, thank you so much for participating in our session three, uh, machine learning in the age of IoT. Our first paper is Pervasive FL, Pervasive Federal Learning for Heterogeneous IoT Systems. The speaker is Jun Xia. Uh, Jun Xia received the, P, uh, the, uh, the bench degree from the Department of Computer Science and Technology, uh, Hainan University in 2016 and the master's degree from the Department of Computer Science and Technology, China University, China in, 19, uh, in 2019. He's currently working toward a PhD degree uh, with the Software Engineering Institute East China Normal University in Shanghai. So his research interests are in the areas of AIoT applications, trustworthy computing, and heterogeneous computing. So um, Junxia, you can start when you're ready. Yeah. Can you see my screen? It's streaming. Yeah, okay. this works very well. Okay, thanks for the introduction. Hello everyone, my, my name is Jun Xia from East China Normal University. Today I would like to give a presentation on Poesio FL Poesio Federated Learning for Heterogeneous IoT System. And this talk consists of four parts. Firstly, I will introduce the motivation of our work and corresponding background. Then I will introduce our post-FL framework in detail. Finally, I will give the experimental results and the conclusion. Due to the merit of central model chaining on decentralized device data without compromising user privacy, federated learning allows knowledge sharing among devices and is becoming an emerging collaborative air paradigm in IoT design. Note that the upload operation of classic federated learning assumes that the local device models have the same architecture as the global model on the cloud aggregate. However, this assumption is too ideal for modern IoT system, which typically compromise a variety of devices equipped with heterogeneous deep neural network models. The violation of this assumption strongly hinders the deployment of federated learning on IoT systems. Therefore, how to break through the barrier of model heterogeneity and enable effective knowledge sharing among devices is becoming a major bottleneck in the design of federated learning framework for IoT systems. To enable secure federated learning for IoT devices equipped with heterogeneous deep neural network models, we propose a novel lightweight cloud-based federated learning framework named PlaceFL, which enables the chaining of heterogeneous devices without posing any assumption. We introduce the concept of modulate that acts as an ominous portal for federated learning based on deep mutual learning. Our approach allows the mutual learning between modulates and local models on devices. Then we will introduce our FL framework as illustrated in this figure. The FL framework consists of two parts. The first part is the cloud server that mainly focuses on the aggregation of modulates. The second part is the heterogeneous HLT devices that concentrate on the chaining of local models. And the modulates based on their locally collected samples, its workflow involves six steps as follows. The first step is in sample. At the beginning of local chaining, each selected device makes inferences from its local data based on the ensemble model, whose predictions are the average of predictions made by the pair of these corresponding modulate and local model. The second step is entropy-based decision gating. To judge the quality of knowledge that can be shared between modulates and local models, we propose the entropy-based decision gating method, which compares the entropy of predictions between modulates and ensemble models. The third step is uh, ADG-based deep mutual learning. Unlike traditional deep mutual learning in FL, it is unwise to conduct mutual learning equally between modulates and local models based on locally captured data. This is because in ID scenarios, the knowledge structure of modulates is quite different from the ones of local models. To address this issue, our approach uses the ensemble model together with our proposed entropy decision gating method to enable knowledge filtering which can ensure the quality of the learned knowledge by modulates from local models. Based on the entropy de definition, Poise FL compares the entropy of predictions for both modulates and ensemble models. 
The first step is gradient upload. At the end of local chaining, an IoT device will upload its modulate gradients to the cloud server, which are stored in the gradient buffer as shown in the figure. The such collected gradients will then be averaged to derive an aggregated modulate. The fifth step is called aggregation. The modulate gradients of all the select devices are received. This step will average such gradients and use this information to form a new modulate. The sixth step is modulate synchronization. The aggregated modulate on the cloud server will be dispatched to all the selected ALT devices for the next epoch channel. To evaluate the effectiveness of our approach, we implemented our FL using PyTorch. All the experiments were conducted on a Ubuntu workstation and 10 JSON Narrow boards. Note that the 10 boards were used to emu emulate partitional involved devices with heterogeneous models, while the other remaining devices only for the scalability analysis were simulated on the workstation. The JSON Nano boards connect to the cloud server using a Wi Fi environment. To comprehensively justify the possibility of our approach, we consider two kinds of data sets three image data sets and one text data set. In each experiment, we use a lightweight model to act as the modulate for PoSFL. We assumed that there are three types of models involved in one IoT system, and that is small, middle, and large, which are of different sizes. We conducted experiments on four well-known datasets. Due to the time constraints, we only present the experimental results on the image dataset. Oh, the post FL, FL indicates our post FL approach, whose inference results come from the ensemble of both modulates and local models. The post FL modulate denotes the case where the inference results come from the modulates of post FL, while the post FL local specifies the inference results come from the local models of post FL. For example, from CIFAR 10 9 ID figure, we can observe that the post FL modulate achieves the best inference. In performance in the non-ID scenario, while it outperforms IL local more than 31% improvement. As more and more heterogeneous devices are integrated into complex IoT systems, the scalability plays an important role in the deployment of policy FL. This figure compares the inference accuracy of IoT systems with different scales in both ID and non-ID scenarios. From this figure, we can find that when more devices are involved in PoSUFL, the overall inference accuracy will increase in both ID and non-ID scenario. As shown in the image net 10, the accuracy is increased by 3.17%. To evaluate the computation overhead of components introduced by PoSUFL, we conducted various experiments to investigate their impacts on the overall chaining time. From this figure, we can find that one policy FL round needs slightly more chaining time than one fat average round that, however, it uh, needs short overall chaining time to achieve the same accuracy. Since policy FL shares knowledge among devices using small scale modulates, the computation overhead of policy FL is much smaller than traditional FL approaches. As an example for MJ10, the size of modulate gradients is 8.71 M, which needs 1.65 seconds on average for one round of communication. However, the gradient size of the large model is 162 M, which requires 13.96 seconds. In con conclusion, in this paper, we present a novel framework named Policy FL that enables effective and scalable federated learning on various heterogeneous devices with different kinds of models. By installing a lightweight deep neural network models uh, on each device, Policy FL allows mutual selective learning between the modulate and the local models on each device by using deep neural learning and our proposed entropy decision gating method. Meanwhile, since all the modulate in FL are of the same structure, they can be used to conduct a federated learning style knowledge sharing among devices. In this way, 
policy FL enables policy federated learning on a large set of heterogeneous LT devices with different types of local models. Comprehensive experiments on well-known data sets demonstrate the effectiveness of policy FL from the perspectiveness of inference, performance, and scalability. That's all, thanks for your listening. Thank you so much. Um, any questions from the audience? Yeah, during the question session, you can keep the screen sharing in case um, people have any questions regarding your slides or figures. Oh, oh, oh okay, okay, I'm sorry. <clears throat> yeah, coincidentally, I also have some backgrounds in uh, heterogeneous federal learning. So um, <clears throat> I have a small question, maybe I'm too dumb to understand. So when you're talking about the module list, is this a subnet or more like a mix expert? Um, is like every module like is a ResNet and or mo mo uh, mobile net. Oh, okay. Um, uh, as, as, as you can see, my pop uh, Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. I'm sorry. My computer. It's fine. It's fine. I think smaller. it's on page four or five something. Yeah. Okay, as you can see, the, uh, as you can see our experimental exper experimental settings, you can see the modulator. You can also add the sub 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 subnet subnet model, or you can uh, you can choose the rest net um, smaller rest net or smaller models. Oh, I got but, it. Uh, yeah. But uh, but uh, but in your experimental ob observation, if the size is too small, um, the, the knowledge sharing may be uh, not very real. So yeah. we, so, we only, so you're using we a only model choose, as a, a modulant, right? Yeah, we only okay. choose the more, more small model, uh, such as a um, 10% 10, 10 small size. We can see this, you can see this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, basically, I, I remember you, you team, your team has another paper called Fed Entropy, so that's, some a paper you can uh, exchange entropies through different scales of similar models. Um, yeah. My, yeah. Another question is when you have this uh, more like uh, multimodality models, right? So does this model uh, they don't do they have some feature engineering interactions or they just stand alone and work on their own threads? Uh, I'm, uh, I'm sorry, Anto. Uh, yeah, sorry. The, does this model has has some uh, interactions, or they just work on their own? Mm. They, yeah. they can learn from they can learn from each other, but uh, not uh, uh, directly learn from each each other. Uh, we use the ensemble model. Yeah. We use an ensemble model to to sh to share the knowledge more 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 frequently. But we, I think. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you can see this figure. Mm -hmm. the so this is the model. This is the local model, and the predictions. We we will also calculate the entropy. After after calculated mm -hmm. after this, we can see if we will use the entropy decision gating to filter some uh, filter some bad knowledges and uh, give the modulate give the modulate more benign knowledge. Uh, yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah so, this, so this this collaboratively learning modulates are like the same track modulates from different devices, right? What I mean is modulates on the same device. Um, are you planning to do some maybe future feature engineering or some multimodality learning between them? I mean, on a single device. It sounds like you're not working on that, right? But maybe that's. Uh, Maybe a try in the future. <laughs> the, I'm not sure it's already there. The the modulates on the same device. Uh, um, the modulate we we can um, we can see the modulate. Uh, I think uh, we will use the JSON Nano to uh, emu emulate the experimental ex mm -hmm. experimental experiments. Um, however, if the device 
can get the model, it you can uh, it can join the policy FL. I think. Yeah. Uh, after after all this, after federated learning begins, the device need to upload the model size, or that uh, it can carry out the maximum, such as uh, the model. If the JSON nano can get the model, it we will let it join our policy FL. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Uh, my next, uh, our next speaker is uh, Yue Tang. So maybe you can share your screen. Oh, sorry, 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 oh, sorry. My, my, my thought. My next. Uh, sorry, uh, sorry. It's it's not not your time. Um, uh, the next speaker. Um, oh, let me double check. Sorry, let me double check. I think the next speaker is Enrico, which we yeah, Enrico. will play the yeah. recorded video okay. that he has presented. Could you replay? Sure, I will uh, share the recorded video yeah, for the do that. presentation. Good morning, I am Enrico Tabanelli from the University of Bologna. Can you hear the sound and see the video? Yes, it's pretty good, you can just play it through. And I'm a third year PhD working in a research group of Professor Luca Benini. Today I will present my latest research on optimizing the inference of random forest-based algorithms, RS5MCUs. Random forests are widely adopted among a broad range of ML applications. They aggregate many weak decision trees, building a stronger learner. They present higher explainability and interpretability than black gloves ML and achieve good results with small datasets and high dimensional feature spaces. In this context, random forests have already reached high accuracy in IoT applications. Some examples are health monitoring and wearable devices and non intrusive mo load monitoring. Pushing the ref inference toward the TinyML paradigm can bring several benefits. By the way, TinyML platforms are highly resource constrained, making ML applications design challenging. For example, monitoring systems extract biosignals with sampling frequencies up to 10 kHz, thus requiring about 100 microseconds per inference. Instead, NILM demands one microsecond per inference since it leverages high frequency features up to 1 MHz. At the same time, state-of-the-art work on uh, random forest at the edge do not cope with such latency requirements. They achieve, for example, 50 milliseconds per inference on the Raspberry Pi 3B and 120 microseconds per inference on the ARM Cortex M4 architecture. Thus, there is a need to optimize RF-based algorithms to unleash their potential at the edge and leverage tiny ML benefits. Optimizing random forests for fast inference without accuracy loss is a challenging task for traditional MCUs. In particular, making a prediction demands non-uniform memory access. Computations are disclosed only at runtime, and the algorithm is memory bounded. Considering that the majority voting resources are negligible compared to decision trees requirements, we introduce a collection of optimized DT kernels designed to reduce the computational memory costs required to re-execute a RAP models on MCUs. Thus, we perform an experimental assessment of our proposed kernels on Paltissimo, a RIS-5 MCU supporting a wide set of ML and DSP-centric instructions. So, the main contribution of this paper are this is the design of three alternative DT kernels optimized to execute on resource-constrained MCUs. We optimize the kernels on Paltissimo using the baseline rv 32 imfc isa and then leverage the XPAL v2 extension to improve the CPI, 
We present a per kernel fine grained analysis pinpointing a hardware agnostic and platform dependent optimizations. We compared alternative kernels proposed against the largely adopted naive DT design. We also illustrate the computational and storage costs demanded by the alternative designs with kernel dependent and platform specific metrics. Several strategies, strategies have been investigated to accelerate tree based algorithms inference. Hard coding DT structuring to the C program leads to inefficient executions on MCU. Instead, the trading between efficiency and precision compromises inference accuracy. On the FPGA side, encoding details into instructions deploys IRF uh, representation not supported by MML frameworks. At the same time, comparator centric accelerators are called RF structuring to hardware but requires large resources. In memory computing, accelerators require an optimal voltage tuning to avoid accuracy drops, and the conductive noise can easily lead to the computation to computational accuracy. We selected the naive kernel as comparison baseline since it corresponds to a widely adopted solution in literature for embedded application. Such an approach simply consists of fully unfolding the DT structure into a sequence of nested if then else statements until reaching the leaf nodes. The first alternative kernel is the DT loop, which represents the three node as a recursive data structure and closes the mandatory node attributes. The children properties present two variables sharing the same space address, representing the pointer to the child node and the leaf class. This algorithmic variant allows traversing trees through a while loop statement. Lastly, to discriminate leaf on decision nodes, we tag leaf node thresholds with a dedicated out of range value. The DT rack uh, embeds leaf nodes into parent decision nodes, thus allowing roughly a 25% space decrease but demanding to extend the node data structure by two additional fields. The kernel routine consists of a recursive function calling itself whenever accessing new decision nodes. Lastly, the DT array kernel adopts an array based tree representation consisting of storing nodes in two tree arrays. This representation avoids memory alignment, enabling a fine grained tuning at the byte level to save memory. Furthermore, the kernel deploys the threshold to distinguish the leaf from decision nodes in the while loop conditions. The experiments have been conducted on Palpissimo, an SOC integrating a 32 bit RISC 5 based processor with a FPU. The RISC core features a four stage in order single issue pipeline featuring the extended RB32 IMFC XPALP2 ISA. Algorithms are implemented in a high level machine independency language and compiled using the open source pulp GCC toolchain supporting the ISA. Lastly, we have targeted uh, two standard datasets representing general IoT application and deployed the CQTLR ML framework for training. We also set the RF model to be populated by 16 decision trees. Now we'll present the results achieved starting from the per kernel fine grained analysis. The naive DT kernel is execu execution is largely bounded by structure miss. The massive code size accounts for about 80% of the memory footprint, leading to a high pressure on today's structure cache and the degradation of the CPI. Moving to the struct-based DT loop kernel decreases the computing time and delivers a 1.3 CPI. Since GCC toolchain aligns unpacked structured members, we evaluate an optimized kernel that avoids memory alignment. Such an approach leads to an overall 14% storage reduction. By the way, the memory alignment involves performing additional misaligned loads, resulting in a slowdown. Moving to the unpacked struct based DT rec kernel reduces memory and inference time. A higher control hazard and load stall contribute to a suboptimal CPI. To further reduce the memory footprint, we support a packed struct version. Due to the lacking of memory alignment, the core performs extra misaligned loads to access structure fields, including a 14% slowdown. Lastly, the baseline array-based design reaches an optimal memory reduction and near optimal CPI. In the shiftless version, we pre-compute offline offset addresses, diminishing the computing time, but at the expense of a 16% memory increment. 
Instead, the stall-free version decreases stalls by reading both child nodes with a single memory access. The optimization allows reaching our near rear load stalls, leading to a 16% speed up featured by a near idle CPI. Comparing the kernels, the naive method uh, represents the most resource demanding design, while the newly introduced kernels move to less demanding constraints. Pareto optimal solutions allow reaching speed ups ranging from 4 to 4.8x and up to 45% memory footprint reduction. Our optimized kernels reach 4.5 microseconds latency and to, uh, 220 kilo inferences per second throughput, while reducing the energy usage down to 15.6 picojoule. In the table, we report the computer memory costs, the naive kernel features the most expensive picojoule per decision. Instead, optimized kernels reach about 0.15 picojoule per decision. Furthermore, the T2Loop and the TR design reduces the node memory to 16 bytes per node and beyond. To conclude, the paper introduced the design of decision tree kernels to optimize the random forest inference on MCUs. We evaluated the performance on a RISC-5 platform by adopting runtime optimization, we also improve the resources requirements. We propose an overall decision tree kernel comparison. And lastly, we summarize time and memory costs. That's all. Thank you a lot for the attention. If you would like, you can visit the code of the paper at the link. Okay. Um, I think we can catch up the schedule faster. So shall we directly move to the next paper? Yes. Okay. So yeah, sorry. Uh, so this time, uh, Tangye, could you just share a screen? Uh, sure. Yeah. Uh, can I see my screen? Yes. Uh, okay, so let me give you an introduction first. Uh, sure. Yeah, nice to see the cathedral learning again. I graduated from Yeah. So <laughs> Yue Tang is currently a PhD candidate at the University of Pittsburgh in, in ECE department. She is advised by Jin Tong uh, Ku. She received her uh, bachelor and master degree from the School of Automation Science and Electrical Engineering at uh, Beihang University, China. Her current research interests include FPGA-based CNN training and on-device artificial intelligence. So, yeah, please go ahead for your talk. Uh, sure. Uh, hello, I'm Yue from the University of Pittsburgh. Today, I will introduce my research on enabling weekly supervised Temporal action localization from on device learning of the video stream. I have the following parts to talk about the introduction, the framework of the whole learning process. With this framework, we propose two, these two approaches. Finally, I will display the experimental results and provide our conclusion. Uh, so, begin with the introduction. Nowadays, Detecting actions in videos has been widely applied in lots of on-device applications. For example, in healthcare, the devices can recognize an elderly person falling down or not. Currently, practical on-device video is always captured as a continuous stream. The video is untrimmed, which means it contains both multiple actions and backgrounds. It is desirable for a model to recognize both the class of action and localize the temporal position where the action happens. Such a task is called temporal action localization. Currently, this task is always trained on the centralized cloud where multiple untrimmed videos are collected and labeled. However, such a process cannot adapt to a new environment. Therefore, it is desirable for a model to continuously and directly learn from local data on the device. However, it is challenging to directly train such a uh, temporal action localization model on the device. To precisely train such a model, 
tremendous data are required with temporal annotations. Generating such annotations is expensive and prone to cause errors. Therefore, a weekly supervised temporal action localization has been proposed, which can learn with only video level labels. However, such weekly supervised TIL cannot directly be applied to on-device learning scenarios because of the following issues. Firstly, current models are learned from well-divided videos. Each video is considered as a training sample and contains only one or limited classes of actions. However, in practical on-device applications, the camera keeps collecting video frames in hours or days, and the, the actions of nearly all classes are included in a single long video. Separating the video into individual uh, videos requires lots of human labeling costs. Besides, to provide video level labels for different video segments, the whole video needs to be uploaded to the Cloud Oracle, which is also inefficient. And up to now, we are the first attempt to directly learn from the on-device non-video stream that aims to solve these problems. Now I will introduce the on-device video learning framework. Uh, before I introduce the framework, uh, I need to revisit the video learning approaches. In this paper, we use this weekly supervised uh, TLO back, back, uh, baseline cola as our backbone. And uh, this work uses contrastive learning to distinguish between action and the background clips during the training process with video level labels. Um, it uses a frozen pre-trained 3D scene encoder to extract uh, this feature's eye from RGB frames and optical flows of each video. And this embedded uh, features E are extracted from this eye. And it uses a uh, mining strategy to select uh, embedded features of easy action, easy background, hard action, and hard background. The easy action means it has the top K highest action attention values. So it is more likely to be an action. Hard action and hard background are located between easy action and easy background. But the boundary is hard to distinguish. But the hard action is supposed to be closer to be easy action. Therefore, they use a contrastive score to make the features of easy action and the hard action, uh, easy action and hard action similar. So the boundary between action and background will be more explicit. Unlike Cola, which is learned from a set of manually separated video files, we explore learning from a long and raw video stream directly captured by on-device cameras without laborious manual splitting. So here is our workflow, which has three steps. In the first step, the camera keeps collecting streaming data. The single stream is divided into non-overlapping segments uniformly with TO clips per segment. We call them original segments. Same with previous weekly supervised works. We use a frozen encoder to extract the features and only fine tune the networks after the encoder. In the second step, we select the most representative clip, TMOST, for each segment and only send TMOST to the Oracle. In the third step, we use the weekly labeled segments to update the model. There are two challenges to consider. The first is in step three, how to pre-process the labeled segments and split them as effective training samples. We propose a self-adaptive dividing approach. It will be introduced in the next part. The second, the second challenge is that if we cannot get segment level labels of all the original segments from the Oracle, we need to find the approach to select the most representative video segments for labeling in step two. To solve this challenge, we propose an interest-based sampling strategy that selects the segments that contain more interesting areas. It will be introduced in the fourth part. Now I will introduce the self-adaptive video dividing approach to address the first challenge. So in the workflow, the stream is divided into these original segments with a predefined lens TO. Assume the Cloud Oracle can provide segment level labels for all the original segments. In each training epoch, 
we converge adjacent segments in a self-adaptive manner. We propose a contrast score-based merging approach, which is shown in this figure. So starting from the first segment, if two adjacent segments share the same segment level label, we'll select the clips that are predicted as easy actions and the easy background. We decide whether to merge the previous segment and the current segment together by comparing the mean of this contrast the score of the two segments before merging and the score of the segment after merging. If the mean of the scores uh, before merging is higher than that of the merged segment, we merge the two segments. Otherwise, it means the segments before merging already include explicit easy action and easy background. Thus, they have complete action and the background information and do not need to be merged. In previous part, we assume the Cloud Oracle can provide labels for all segments. It is also necessary to sample the most important segments based on the labeling budget of the Oracle. In this part, we propose an interest-based sampling strategy that selects segments that have more interesting areas. So in this figure, we use the pre-trained model to find a non-overlapping action proposals area one for each segment I. And then we merge three segments together and predict non-overlapping action proposals that are located in segment I, which is area two. The intersect proposals of area one and two are represented as the interest. And we use the following equation to judge the score and select the segments with highest scores based on the labeling budget. Now I will introduce the experimental results. So here is the experimental setup. We use the same SOMOS 14 data set with our CoLab baseline. I like, unlike the baseline, which trains the model from separate untrimmed videos, we combine the videos together with different orders to form a single long video stream. And we consider the following situations. First, the videos are randomly combined. And the second, they are randomly combined, but at least uh, Two consecutive videos in the input stream are from the same class. And third, all the videos from the same class are consecutive in the input stream. These three different situations represent different temporal correlations of the input stream. So first, I will show the experimental result of the merging approach. We compare the proposed contrast score-based merging with result merging, random merging, and the merging of strategies. And it can be shown that the contrast score-based merging with one iteration per epoch performs better in general. We also analyze the performance in each situation in detail in our paper. And now let's see the performance of different merging and sampling strategies. We compare the proposed interest-based sampling strategy with random sampling and uncertain sampling. We also compare different situations under the aforementioned uh, three situations. So it can be seen that the proposed uh, interest-based approach, the IS, outperforms other strategies, uh, even use different, uh, even under different merging strategies. And uh, here is the conclusion. Uh, that's all. Thank you. Okay. Any questions? Uh, I have a small question. Uh, sure. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, I just uh, curious. I have never done video planning before, just curious. Um, uh, I know that um, in lots of um, video encoding, like H.264, uh, those video encoding techniques, um, they have um, lots of like pre-analysis of the video contents. Also, I also know that some people, especially for the wireless encoding people, they leverage lots of like reserved uh, coding space, uh, which is reserved empty coding space to incorporate lots of like video interpretation or um, uh, into the encoding to facilitate like uh, video compression, those kind of things, uh, which also gave, you know, decoder some idea about the background program, lots of, you know, uh, similar uh, um, considerations as you have. So 
yeah, this is just curious. So uh, is there any work just combining the, with the learning uh, with the video encoding or are you guys planning uh, some similar stuff? Is this a valid question? Uh, my work just used the uh, frozen encoder. So, mm -hmm. so we have not uh, do much about the uh, encoder part because so in in this in this uh temporal action localization task, uh those uh so if if we need to uh if we need to fine tune the encoder, it will have lots of uh ha have lots of uh, co uh, computation uh, overhead, and uh, so most uh, most uh, weekly supervised uh, temporal action localization just uh, use a uh, frozen encoder and uh, fine tune the uh, fine tune the models after uh, after that. So they have already extracted the feature in here. Uh, mm -hmm. But I think it can also uh, be a good uh, be a good future work. To, to do the encoder because in, in this in this in this task the the length of the of each video or the length of the video stream is um is uh, it, uh, is unknown so, um, mm -hmm. there are some uh, work there are some work based on the encoder that deal with the trimmed videos which means these videos only have the actions but in such task, it has both the trim video and the maybe very long useless background. So it makes it hard to uh, fine tune the whole encoder. But it, it can be a, a so, just because it is challenging. So it can be a very, uh, very promising future work, I think. Okay, thank you so much. Yeah, we can move to the next paper. Sure. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next speaker. I think our next speaker is Nagging. Nagging, sorry. Hi. Oh, hi. Yeah. Um, Did you? So can I share the screen? Do I have the access? I think so. Do. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. So we're in a, a working progress session. So the first uh, work is what to expect of early training statistics investigation on hardware aware neural architecture search is a mass paper. So the speaker is nagging his PhD students in the department of uh, ECE at McGraw University from Canada. Their research interests include machine learning and intelligence and the multi object optimization. They are currently working on the modeling and optimization of the transformer based neural language processing for resource constrained computer system at the edge. Yes, please proceed. Yeah. Hello, everyone. I'm Negin, and I'm a PhD student at McGill University. Uh, today, I'm talking about our work in progress about utilizing latency and accuracy predictors for efficient hardware awareness. Um, during the recent years, uh, many of the state-of-the-art language models, such as transformers and BERT models, has become more and more complex to the point that deploying them on a resource-constrained uh, platform has become impractical because of their hardware limits. Uh, latency Ever Neural Architecture Search, or NAS, is an effective solution to find uh, the models that satisfy these constraints by adding uh, latency feedback in addition to accuracy feedback during the search loop. However, collecting these on-device latency and accuracy feedback would significantly slow down the NAS process. As a solution, uh, we proposed a framework that uh, predicts both accuracy and latency of our target models on our target devices by, and removes the uh, online hardware feedback from the search loops. Uh, 
Our methodology consists of four phases. At first, we define the design space of our target architecture, and then we profile the selected models on our target hardware. And after that, we train the predictors based on the measured data set. And finally, we integrate the predictors into the NAS framework and search for the best trade-offs between the latency and accuracy of the design space. In our experiments, we uh, selected Dynabred as our test case. Uh, Dynabred is a super net with uh, adaptive uh, depths and uh, widths. Uh, this flexibility allows us to sample many design points from the uh, Dynabred's architectures without the need to retrain the models from the scratch. And after that, we um, profiled our models on JSON TX2 GPU, which is an embedded GPU and resulted on 400 design points, uh, which you can see in this figure uh, with their measured latency and error values. Uh, finally, uh, we uh, experimented with uh, five different uh, predictors, um, including gradient boosting, random forest, K, uh, K nearest neighbor, neighborhoods, polynomial regression, and DNN, and um, measured the uh, performance with uh, multiple metrics. Um, since uh, our goal is to uh, find, uh, and after uh, using these predictors, we search for the front line of our design space in order to find the trade offs. And since our goal is to find the closest predicted front line to the true part or front line of our design space. Um, in our case, ADRS or average distance from the reference set is a better metric for us compared to root mean square error or error bands because we are searching for the um, accuracy of frontline predictions. Um, that's why uh, we uh, selected ADR uh, random forest with the best ADRS result as our final predictor. And this predictor was able to uh, only uh, predict the front line and just miss two design points on the part of front line of the design space while achieving uh, up to 57 times the speed up uh, during the NAS process. Um, thank you so much for your attention and like I'm happy to answer if you have any questions. Yeah, sorry for my mistake. I. I, I mistaken your um, um, paper title. Could you if you the paper title compare yourself? Maybe to sure. a better introduction. Yeah, sorry about that. Yeah, the paper should be utilizing latency and accuracy predictors for NAS. Yeah, I just gave a, a skip paper. Okay, to catch up time, maybe we can move to the, uh, the last presentation. Um, sorry, uh, the, for the Rosen, uh, we have one uh, paper, the uh, uh, the first work in progress. I didn't see the speaker in the um, room. The the uh, what to expect of early training statistics. Are we skipping this paper, or we have our speaker here? Mm, so if we don't have the speaker for one session, we wait. We are not going to move to the second. Okay. Okay, me. maybe we just move to the bio. So I'm, I'm, I'll have the recording for mm -hmm. uh, which speakers. I think we first move to uh, Yunji's, uh, Ching Ji's paper, and then we can check it later. So, Yunji Ching, are you? Ready? I can share the recording for Jiang Zhang Lu. Maybe we can put to the last. Okay. Let's let's yeah, we need to speak up first. Uh Yunji, hello. Oh, it didn't work in dry round. Okay, so let's let's put videos.
Yeah, I will uh, play the yeah, video. So we have two videos to play. One is what to expect. Another video is bio circle and then, yeah. So we're first going to uh, share the uh, presentation what to expect of early training statistic. And if you want to do some introduction, then I will play the video. Yeah, I think you can play the video. Yeah. Hello, this is Xiang Zhong, a PhD student from Nanyang Technological University in Singapore. Today, I will present our working progress paper named What to Expect of Early Training Statistics and Investigation on Hardware Aware New Architecture Search. In this slides, I introduce the proposed proxy named Trend Batchwise uh, Estimation, which is reliable and also computationally uh, efficient. Specifically, we tag the early training statistics as the input and the train MLP model to predict the accuracy of the given architecture. In this slide, we compare the correlation performance of TBE against another two relevant proxies, named TSE and BTE. As shown in this figure, we observe that under the same training budgets, TBE consistently achieves better correlation performance on NAS bench 201. To make it more intuitive, we visualize the relationships between the test accuracy and the normalized architecture score using TBE, BTE, and TSE. As shown in this figure, we observe that under the same training budgets of two epochs, TBE consistently achieves better uh, performance, uh, which is more reliable. In this slide, we take a query based NAS method uh, like ANAS as the search engine and use TBE to quickly evaluate the performance of possible architecture candidates. As shown in this table, we observe that TBE is able to find the architecture with higher accuracy but lower latency than previous relevant methods. In this slide, we directly compare TBE with another two relevant proxies under the same training budgets of two epochs. As shown in this figure, we observe that under the same latency constraint, TBE consistently obtains the architecture with higher accuracy, which shows the effectiveness of TBE. That's all, thank you. Okay, so uh, Rosen, maybe we move to the next. Mm, sure. Yeah, since we don't have the author here to answer this question. Oops. Happened. Yeah, the next question, the next um, paper is um, Yun Ji Qing's work, is also. Um, the, it's also a working progress is, uh, I'm sorry, glow circle and, and efficient software hardware co-design approach for neural network accelerators with block circulant matrix. Since uh, Inji's microphone has some problems, we could just play um, the video. But give a quick introduction. Um, Inji Qing received a bachelor degree in computer science and technology from University of Science and Techn Technology of China in 2022. Uh, yeah, just graduated. So he is currently working toward a master's degree in the computer system architecture with the School of Computer Science and Technology of University of Science and Technology of China. So his research interests include FPG accelerators and embedded systems. Since uh, Yun Chi Cheng is, is in the Zoom room, so maybe after the video playing, uh, if anyone are interested, can raise questions in the chat thread. Okay, let's play the video. Um, Roger, could you 
share the video or I can do that. Sure. Um, I just have a small technical issue. I will. Okay. Maybe share. I can do that too. Can you see my screen? Yes. Okay, I'll just go play. Yeah. The key idea of our work is to use block synthesis wave matching to compress DNA networks and decide the constanting accelerator using a high level synth. This way, software designer can also easily and quickly finish the accelerator design. This is the main architecture of convolutional components. We mainly use Telsin and double buffer design. The architecture is simple but achieves efficient results. Oh, it's a very quick. So, so Regan, shall we uh, stop here or is take a break? Any questions? Okay, so I think we're just uh, up to the time of 12 o'clock. If they're in China, it's already 12 o'clock. So maybe uh, we can stop our session here. And if you have any questions, you can um, reach the authors in the gather town. Oh, I saw uh, Josh Yun is also here. So any, uh, he's our co-chair. So any questions? Yeah, thank you for your host, Xiang. Uh, okay. I have other questions. So I think, yeah, we can disassemble, <laughs> right? So stop here and uh, have a good day, everyone. Yeah, thank you, everyone. Thank you, Xiang. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.